Well, I think, still think Michael had won the fight, you know? And when I see everybody running in the ring and thing, all I want to do is to see that Michael was all right. The, the ringside doctor, I mean, that was just crazy. He had, like, no equipment. Um, he got his suitcase and put that under Michael's head. He had a torch, was looking at Michael's eye, and you could tell something was very wrong at that stage. It wasn't just a straight knockout. Things, things weren't right. I didn't... I always thought he'd be OK. I, I never knew, you know. I thought, so what if he's lost this, you know, but I, yeah. I didn't think... Wait, it, the thing is, also, you'd think that he'd be OK, you know, medics around ringside, um, facilities, you know, two minutes, uh, you know, this is England. This is not a third world yeah. country. These are anxious moments for the Commonwealth middleweight champion because he has got medical attention in here now and people are being cleared out of the ring and this is dreadful to see after such a memorable contest. Nobody knew where to go. It, it, was, it was just so crazy because we was running with the stretcher towards the exit but we didn't know where the ambulances were. There was no one to tell us. Uh, and the doctor shouted over there and there was like these two ambulances there we went in the back of that and we set off now the, the driver of the ambulance said where to D didn't even know where to go you know the doctor was just looking in his eye the whole time uh, and you could tell from what in you know, the doctor's expression it wasn't good i remember just sitting down in the ambulance just just like looking up and seeing the the blue flashing light go around at the top and just thinking you know th you know this is this is it this is you know what it's all come down to now the ambulance eventually arrived at North Middlesex Hospital from White Hart Lane. By that time, Michael's brain had been starved of oxygen for over 30 minutes. The hospital said, this is the wrong hospital, we can't treat Michael. You need to go to, you know, to a hospital which specialises in, you know, injury to the brain. Another trip across London to St Bart's Hospital. Michael finally goes into theatre two hours after the fight was stopped. And when we got to Bart, it was only then we realised how serious it was. I, I think there was a lot of concern that Michael might not be able to fight again. But then people started to realise that Michael might not live. Michael had suffered an acute subdural haemorrhage, a blood clot on the surface of the brain that left him in a coma. The injury was sustained in the 11th round by Eubank's punch and the impact of Michael's head hitting the ropes. He had two procedures in the early hours following the injury to remove blood clots from the brain and then went on to have a variety of other procedures aimed at keeping the pressure inside the skull down and then draining excess fluid from the brain. To be honest with you, it was such a shock. I don't even remember what they told me because it was like I was in a different world. You know, I was in a different world. I was in a state of shock. Mm. It was madness for us. I mean, one minute he's on top of the world, the next minute he's fighting for his life. And you just have to live minute by minute. That's all, you know. You just, not even that, you live second by second, you know. Um, hoping that another clot doesn't develop, hoping that another difficulty doesn't arise. Michael had a... Uh, a large bandage, blood smeared bandage around his head and um, scrawled on it was no bone flap. And I just never forget that, and it was bloody, bloody finger marks from gloves. It really struck me then just how serious this had been. You know, you can't suddenly start playing this guy, you know, Westlife tapes. This is the real world, this. This is the real thing. This is a, a guy who should be dead. That was sad, seeing someone that you trained so long and had so hard to be world champion, the next minute he's lying on the bed, with wires and everything, I think a bit of his skull out. That was sad. Guilty feelings abounded after the fight. Roy Francis, the referee, speaks about the aftermath for the first time. We all know what happened. I don't want to dwell on that. Um, I did my job. Uh, I, I 
would never want to bring back the, well, the feelings I had for the next fortnight. I'd never want them again. I had uh, maimed uh, somebody fun. That was, um, that wasn't good for me. To actually have caused this accident, or to be a part of the accident, I should say, wasn't good. It wasn't good for me. As the British boxing establishment tried to cope with Michael's condition, he received a visit from one of his boxing heroes. Muhammad Ali came, and that was a big boost as well, you know, to see him face to face, because I love him, you know, you still, I love Muhammad Ali. When Muhammad Ali came in, um, you know, we were all, yeah, for wow. Like, you know, he is my, my hero. <laughs> he is my idol of all time. And, you know, he was in the same room as us. And then when Michael saw him, his, you know, he, he obviously, he was down sometimes, so when he saw him, his eyes just lit up. I, I can remember his words as if, as, if, as if it was yesterday. He looked at me just like the one, just like the one looking at you, he said to me. He said, you're the man. You're the man. It's a Michael Watson. I, mm, I, caught, I still couldn't smile. He said, do you know something? You, you're nearly as good looking as me. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's such a he really he really does a great character. I said something. The first time a smile broke out my face. I was broke, I just started laughing ever since that day. I broke from my barrow. Michael had always been a fighter. He would now have to summon the same strength and determination that made him Commonwealth champion to fight his way back to health. As brain damage had left him paralyzed with no control over his body. Michael's physical first started to look, look after him. Um, he was really, couldn't, couldn't talk. The only way Kate was either through blinking he couldn't move his hand. He lost uh, that. He won. Uh, he's lost. Well, that is Michael. Well, he's in a wheelchair, uh, like a baby. You still having problems with giggling at the moment? Uh, big. <laughs> big appetite. I know you have. You know you have to feed him. We destroy. You have to. To give him anything for him to swallow, you have to rub his jaw to try to see if he could swallow. You know, it 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 is hard. 